and it's on you. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. We are going to do um, design space orientation for Cricut today. So happy to have you here. My name is Kesley and I'll be your instructor today. I have Lindsay um, on the back side there, give her a wave. She will be answering your questions in the Q&A. Please know if you have any questions as we go along to drop them in the Q&A. Lindsay will be monitoring, monitoring the Q&A and will be able to answer your questions there. And she can uh, send over any questions that I can answer live to me. So please do check out the Q&A if you have any questions to go through, we'll get to them. Um, just to give you an overview of how the class will work, we'll do a slide presentation first to give you sort of like a, a big overview of design space. And then we'll slide into design space live where you can craft along with me or just watch and take notes. And then the last part, we'll be putting our project together. So if you do plan to work with me, please go ahead and open Design Space now, just in case you needed to do any updates on Design Space that will run in the back side. For this first part, take out a notepad and a pencil so you can write down notes. If you're working on a desktop or a laptop, you can always screenshot as we go along. Um, I will have a point where I suggest write this down. Um, it's, a, oh, it's the final overview of everything. So you'll just want to take a minute and kind of jot it down. So this class is being recorded. It will be available in about 48 hours on Michael's um, YouTube channel. So if you feel like you missed anything or you want to go back and watch it again and do the pause and play as you create the project on your own, feel free to do that. So. It takes a little bit of the pressure off of trying to keep up um, or anything like that as we go along. Again, my name is Kesley. I'm your Cricut instructor. Lindsay's on the backside answering any questions you put into the Q&A. So why don't we go ahead and get started with um, our slides. So the first part is the Cricut um, Hello, welcome to the family. So no matter which machine you're joining us with, if it's the Cricut Joy, the Cricut Explore Air, or the Cricut Maker, either any of those machines will work with your project today. The Cricut Joy, just to give you a quick sneak peek of that machine, is our smallest machine. It has a four and a half wide, um, four and a half inch footprint. It is so small, it really will fit into a cubby hole. It's great if you travel um, or, you know, sit outside of a, a kid's practice to craft on the way. And the Cricut Joy does have its own unique app to work with the Cricut Joy. The Explore Air is by far our most popular machine. It meets almost most of your crafting needs. And the Cricut Maker is the machine um, the Cricut Maker is the machine that expands with your crafting. It, it works on a gear system. So it has a couple more uh, cutting devices, tools that you can put into it and really get the most out of your machine. So now, once you know which machine you have or which machine, if there's one you want to try out, check out our website at learn.cricut.com for more information on the different specific machines you're using. Now, no matter which machine you'll be using, it all works through Design Space. Design Space is Cricut's software that works on a desktop or a laptop. It just lives there and that's where you design everything. You can also put um, Design Space on a tablet device or a phone device. They're a little bit different um, compared to what you see on the desktop and the laptop. I'll be using the desktop today, and as I go through, I'll point out some differences as we go along. Design Space works with whichever machine you're using in whichever you will be working, um, whichever device you'll be working with. So the first part to getting your, yourself start up with Cricut is to create your Cricut ID. Your Cricut ID is one unique ID that works with 
uh, design space and your machine. It doesn't matter how many machines you have or where you're going to be using design space. So for me, I work with design space on my phone and my tablet and two different computers. And I have a variety of machines that I hook up to, but I only have one Cricut ID. Now, once you've set up your Cricut ID, you'll be offered an opportunity to try Cricut Access for 30 days for free. So Cricut Access is an invaluable creative tool, especially for a beginner. Cricut has over 100,000 images and that library is growing daily. I say 100,000 because that's the number that's um, visible for Cricut, but it really is close to 200,000 images now that are in the Cricut library. When you have Cricut Access, um, you get access to the Cricut images for free. And there's some other perks along the way when you use Cricut Access. Now, design space is totally free. So that, that piece of working and communicating with your machine, there's no cost to using design space. It's only if you wanted to add on the creative components that are available in Cricut Access that there's a fee. Now, there's a basic Cricut Access um, account that you can set up, and that is completely free. It gives you um, about 500 different images to work with. You have 10 to 15 fonts to work with, and um, you can work with the other Cricut images in an a la carte fashion. So if you don't use Cricut images very often, or maybe your um, crafting needs don't require a lot of different images, you may just go with the free version and purchase images as you go along. Now, once you've purchased an image or selected an image with a Cricut Access account, you can use that image as much as you want for as long as you're using Cricut Access. And there are perks and benefits to being a standard Cricut Access member and a premium Cricut Access member um, that come along with that. You have the entire library of Cricut images to use at your fingertips along with the fonts and the projects. And the projects are great for beginners. So we'll dive into those in a little bit. Now, once you open up Cricut Design Space, you come to a home page. If you're on a tablet device, you'll automatically go into the canvas and on a desktop, you go into the home screen. So if you're following along in the class today, um, you're, the way to toggle between the home screen and the canvas screen on a tablet is in the upper right corner and it'll say home and canvas and you can switch between the two. Now there has been an exciting update to the home screen that recently happened. Um, you have your header bar here and the header bar is the same whether you're on the canvas or the home screen. And it's a quick and easy way to access your profile. So those three lines, when you click on those, you jump into your profile. And from your profile, you can navigate between the home screen and the canvas. This is also where you go to set up a new machine and some other changes like your settings can be found under here. Um, and you can get, if you've upgraded your software for any reason, um, you can see that the what the new features are in that update. Now from, oops, I have my arrow, sorry. Now underneath the header bar is this carousel and the carousel are images that will change um, various times, probably there's like six different images each in the carousel. And it's really to highlight new, new products that are coming out or fun ideas on how to use the different Cricut products. What's new about the home screen is between the header bar and the um, carousel, those two are the same. And then there's a new section here above where your projects are, and that is new images. So you'll see new images that have been added to Cricut Access on your home screen now. Super exciting, because I always love to browse through the new images. Below the new images are where your projects, you can find your projects very quickly and easily. Your projects are projects that you've started and created on the canvas and saved to be able to go back and access later. Underneath the, my, your projects are the um, video playlists, which are great because these are quick features that will give you little snippets, two to three minute snippets of how to work with different little pieces in Cricut. 
Below that is the community of projects and the Cricut projects. So they sort of switch back and forth. Um, the community of projects, you can find other community members by searching for that community member here. And you can find projects that community members have shared with the community. So that's always fun to see what other people are making. Now from the home screen, if you're ready to start your project, you just click up on this uh, new project icon here. And this from the home screen will take you into Design Space Canvas. So again, when you open up your tablet, you automatically go into the canvas and you use these um, icons here to toggle back and forth. So if you're on a tablet or if you plan on working on a tablet later, this is what your canvas will look like. And at the bottom of your canvas is where you find all your icons. When you're working on a desktop or a laptop, you have a bigger screen, so you have more real estate to have these icons open um, in panels. On your tablet, the design panel will be found on the bottom left corner here. On your tablet, your action panels are also on the bottom, and that's where you can find your edit tools and your layers panel down there. Now, if you're on a phone, everything will be along the bottom and each um, action item design panel will all have its own unique icon right on the bottom. So there are a little bit differences between using um, the different devices. Now on your, at the top of your canvas is the header bar. And this is sort of like a quick way to navigate through a few different things. Again, you have these uh, three lines here that will take you to your profile. You can rename your canvas and that's if you're using a saved project, you've saved that project and renamed it. You can uh, do a quick access to your projects right here, save your project and identify which machine you'll be using. On the left side of the canvas is the design panel. Now remember, look down below if you're on a tablet or a phone. The design panel, I like to think of the design panel as where you input information onto the canvas. So this is sort of where you start and you're adding something to your canvas. So within the design panel, you'll find images, and when you click on this images icon, this will take you to all the library, the Cricut Access Library of all the images that are available to you to use. You also add text to your canvas from your design panel. So when you click on the text icon, a text box will show up. And as you type in the text, the text will appear on your canvas. And above your canvas is the edit bar for your text. And that's where you can change your spacing, change your font type, um, curve your text, align your text, all within this edit bar. Also in the design panel, adding shapes to your canvas. There's um, a, just basic shapes are in the canvas here in the design panel, including a score line, which is super important if you're making boxes or you're making cards, that's where you add the score line to your canvas. Also, um, on the design panel, a couple other things to show is the upload icon. So if you have images that you've created or you've purchased outside of design space, this is where you would go to add those images to your library. And then um, the projects icon here will take you into the Cricut Access Library of Projects. And also on desktop and laptop only is the templates icon. The templates icon is a, a library of uh, images that are full size projects, if you will. So like your blanks. So within your templates, if you clicked on templates, let's say you're working on a t-shirt design, maybe a family reunion, you have 25 family members are coming together and you are having to make a shirt for a two month old all the way up to an extra, extra large size. Well, when you go into templates, you can grab a t-shirt that will be sized for all those different sizes. So you can make sure that your image you size appropriately for that onesie versus the extra, extra large um, t-shirt. 
And there's some other templates in there that you can work with, but mostly I use it for t-shirts when I'm making t-shirts for the whole family. Now, as you add shapes onto your canvas, you'll notice that above your uh, canvas, the edit bar pops up. And this is the edit bar for shapes, images, um, for your layers. It, it appears above the, the text bar. So the text bar actually would pop up below that. So if you had both text and a shape on your canvas, you would see your text bar here and your shape edit here. Now, as you add layers or images or shapes to your canvas, you'll notice that your layers panel starts to wake up. And each time you add a layer to your canvas, that image shows up here. So you get a little snapshot, a thumbnail of your image and the images stack one on top of the other. So I started off with my purple square and then I added this um, round circle. And from there, I, you can see that it shows up in my layers panel here with the circle coming in on top of the square. So I don't know why it took me a while to wrap my brain around that, that the, that the newest comes in on top instead of on the bottom. But um, that, that's just something to remember if you're looking for your images on your canvas. Now at the bottom of your layers panel, these um, icons here are the action icons. And this is how you can manipulate the layers. We do have a 201 class, um, Actions in Design Space, which is great to go over all the different actions and what you can do with each of the actions here in the Actions panel. Definitely something to explore as you're, as you're working and navigating your way around Design Space, but we do have a class that really gives you more detail about how to use those icons. Now, if you're on a tablet device, those icons here, the slice, the weld, the attach and flatten, can all be found in the bottom center under a tab called Actions. So the last thing you'll see on your uh, design space canvas is this zoom icon. So when you're working on a desktop or a laptop and you wanna be able to get a closer look at what your design is, you can zoom in or zoom out using this sliding bar right here. So as you increase the number, it makes your image larger on the cam, it enlarges your canvas. Your image still may be say three inches by three inches, but you can really zoom in and get a better image but get a better view of that image using the zoom bar. If you're on a tablet or mobile device, you can use your fingers and stretch out and pinch your image from there. Okay, so now it's time to just do a quick review of where to find the different sections in design space. So the first one, we're gonna start off on the left side here where you have something that you're putting onto your canvas and that's in the design panel. So think about reading, you know, left to right or working your way around clockwise on your canvas. Over on the left side here is the design panel with shapes and text and images. This is where you add information to your canvas. On the top is your header bar, and that helps you navigate between your profile, the canvas, and the home screen. Then below that, uh, header bar is this green is this box right here and this is your edit bar and this is where you can change the size of your um, layer where you can um, change what the operation the color um, if you want to rotate it all that happens here in the edit bar and then on the right hand side is the layers panel and the layers panel those images and text and shapes come in and stack one on top of the other in the layers panel. Below in the layers panel are the action icons, and those are actions that you can do to the layers that will change those layers. And then the last one is that zoom um, icon there. And this is right here. So the zoom icon is the icon that uh, lets you enlarge or lower. 
So now what is what you might want to do is just take a screenshot of this, take out your camera or jot it down. And so that you'll know where to find the different port parts of design space as we move along. So I'm just going to leave that up there for a second. Um, and just remember that over on your design panel, you have your images. That's where we'll go to the Cricut Access and find images. You also have like the text and the shapes. Anything you can add to your canvas will be found over here. Okay, so we're going to move on from here and go into a little bit more detail about those images in the Cricut Access Library. So when you click on images, it takes you into the library of all the different images that are on here. Um, so the images that are available and you'll get it, you'll pop in one of two ways. Either you'll come in with the search screen here or you'll come in and see a whole list of images that you can see. So you navigate to the search screen in the upper left hand corner. So if you didn't come in on that way, you can always navigate over to it. Um, the first category here are the highlighted categories. And this is where you can see which images are featured, what's recently been added, um, what images are free this week. If you don't have Cricut access, I do encourage you to use those free images as long as you can. I don't know when they change or when they're added. <laughs> um, now in the search bar here, you can use keywords to search for an image. So for example, on this one, we're gonna look for um, an image that said, love you heart. I wanted just a little heart that would have love you in it. And I came up with a lot of results. You can use the filters on the left side here to sort of filter through um, the different images and narrow down your search. So just to review those, some of the filters you might look for are the operation type, like how's it gonna cut? Is it, is it something you want to draw? Something like that. Um, image complexity and layers. The image complexity tells you how many cuts, if it's got a lot of cuts in the image or if it's just one simple image. And then the layers might be if it's a single layer or a multiple layer would be right there. And then also another way to narrow down might be your materials. This has changed a, a bit with the most recent update. And I think they actually removed the material choice from the, from the layers. So it will look a little bit differently when we go over to design space. Now, when you've selected an image, you'll notice that it has um, the green flag here. Not all images have the green flag. If it's a, um, if it's a, licensed image, it won't have the green flag here, but if it's part of Cricut Access, it will have the green flag in the image. You can also check out the little eye icon on an image to get the image name and to get the image number. Um, if you wanted to share or something like that, that's all right there. And then you can also check out the set of images. Most images um, we'll have other images that correspond with that image. So it'll, it'll be presented in a set of images that can then be used to create multiple projects. So for example, if you're doing something for a bridesmaid and you want to do like a nail party or something like that, you know, a spa day, you may find a whole bunch of images that coordinate with a spa day um, from one image that you've liked. So I always like to check those out too and see what else is there. Now, when you've selected an image, it will have this green box around it, and the image will go into the, your queue tray to put it on your canvas. One other thing to point out when you're in design space in Cricut Access, I'm sorry, yeah, in Cricut Access are if what, what format the images are in. So if it's a free image, it'll tell you it's free. If it's part of your subscription, it will pay, say subscribed, or if it's a licensed image or has a fee associated with it, the, there will be a dollar amount with that image. Now, again, once you've purchased an image or if you're using Cricut Access, you have access to that image as long as you're in Cricut Access. If it, again, images come and go in the free section, so I never know when they're changing. Um, and what was um, check out, we do have an angel policy on how you can use images 
um, if you're reselling, if you have like a side hustle or you're using Cricut Access to make projects to resell. So we do have an angel policy on that. So once your image, you've selected your image, it will show up on your queue down here, and then you'll want to insert that image into your, um, into your canvas right here. Then um, you can do, use the quick edit icons to quickly enlarge your image, reduce the size of your image, rotate your image. All you can, um, the red X deletes the image from your canvas. The backward C rotates that image. The double arrow will enlarge the image. And this last um, quick edit icon um, over on the left side is the lock. So if the proportions are locked or not, that's right here. Um, and so once you've got your size of your image the way you want it and you're ready to make it, you just click on the green make it icon at the top of the screen and it goes onto your prepare screen here. And now it's it shows up as yellow, but you can cut it out of pink vinyl or whatever color vinyl you're using. You'll select if you're cutting it with a mat or if you're using smart materials, you'll cut it without a mat. And then you select um, the machine you'll be cutting with and which materials you'll be using. So if you have, like you can check out the popular materials or what your favorites are, or if you don't see your material listed here, you can go to the browse all materials to select your material and then it will tell you it's ready to cut and your, your light will start flashing on your screen. Okay, so that is the overview of design space. It's sort of a nugget of where you can navigate and find things. What we wanna do now is go into Design Space Live. So if you're working with me, it's easiest if you minimize um, your Zoom. So it's, it's in a little corner and then you've got your uh, Design Space open and we'll walk through how to bring in an image, resize that image and cut the image. My blank today is the um, celebrated DIY cup color changing mugs. So I'm going to be using this to create a design to go on the front of it. And what I like to do to start with is obviously measure, I haven't had a chance to wash this even, um, is to measure how large my design should be. So if you notice, the, my shape, it tapers down so it's wider up here where my hands are and then it gets narrower at the bottom, which is great for my coffee holder in my car. But it makes it a little trickier to um, put your image on here. So what I like to do is I like to kind of hold it in my hands where I, where I would hold it if I were carrying it and measure from my thumb all the way over to my pointer finger here. So on my ruler, it's four inches. So my design, I'll make it at a maximum four inches across. So if you have your blank with you, go ahead and measure it and know how big you're going to make your image. If you don't have a blank with you, you can use my measurement and add it to a notebook or any, you can really add your sticker anywhere you wanna, where you wanna put it. What we're doing is we'll be cutting out of vinyl and making a vinyl sticker that you can add on to anything. Um, and if you use removable vinyl or permanent vinyl, um, I'll, we'll talk about some differences there. So why don't we jump into Design Space Live and if you have, um, Design space opened already, great. If not, go ahead and open it. And we're going to start off at um, the home screen. So let me switch back, go to my profile and I'm going to my home screen. So you can see now where these featured images pop up. My projects are right here. Um, the video playlists are here. And then you have these fun projects from Cricut, as well as you scroll down, you'll get to community projects. And the community projects are projects that are made by people like you and me, if you've chosen to share a project you're working with, that's right there. Okay, so we're gonna go up to the top and select new project. Now, as you come to your new project, you'll have a completely bank blank screen. So we need to find something to add to that screen. So why don't we go ahead and go to images and it takes me into 
the all image category. So I can see, remember I said you might come in one of two different ways. So here I can see all the different images um, that are new and or being used. What I would like to do is do a search for a free image. So on my filters, I'm going to select free images. So all the free images will, will show up. And today I'd like to use um, just a phrase that would go on my cup. And the phrase I'm going to pull up says, believe, if I can spell, believe in your dreams. Now you can use any shape or image or word that you'd like to use. Um, I'd like to use believe in your dreams. And I've already listed the free images. So I know that I could really use any of these images um, and they'd be free. If you have Cricut Access and you want to use a different image, feel free to do that. Um, but, you know, we just, we may um, scoot ahead. So uh, don't, don't take too long. <laughs> um, just also going in over an overview of the images. When you um, save the image here, you can click and find the image that you've saved by going into my projects and then saved images here. So images that you've saved would be right there. That takes us out a little bit, but now, so the way that I got back was I just clicked on images. So let me do that one more time, sort of did that fast. We're gonna go to, if you save an image, so let's say you wanna use believe in your dreams later, but maybe you also like make dreams happen. So you wanna save that one for later too. So I've saved that image. I can view all of my saved images here or I can go into, once this clears away, just a sec. I can go to my projects. And so all my projects will show up and then go into the drop down menu here to the projects I, or the images I've saved or projects I've saved are right here. And then I can go back to that image I was searching for by clicking on images again. Jerry's asking, so if I edit before I upload it, does it need to be an SVG file? Jerry, you can upload PNG, JPEG, SVG, are the types of files you can upload. So we're gonna select this file right here, Believe in Your Dreams. I'm gonna put that little green box around it. It's showing up in my queue. So I'm gonna add that to my canvas. And there's my image onto my canvas. Now I want to change the size of this and I'd like to keep my proportion locked, but I'm just gonna show you if you wanted to make it longer, you could unlock the proportion here using the quick edit tool and bring that image down longer like that so it would fit longer on your, on your mug or tumbler. But I don't wanna do that. So it's almost perfect size, it's 3.99. I'd like to make it a little bit smaller um, make it more like 3.5. So I go up to the edit bar up here and I change the width to 3.5. My proportions are still locked. So my width and my height will change at the same rate. And I hit enter. So now I have this cute believe in your dreams um, image that I can add to my canvas. So once I've, I've changed the size, I have it the size I'd like to have it. I'm going to the make it icon here at the top. I'm using my Explore 3 machine. You can do this on a Cricut um, Joy or on the Maker too, on the Maker also. <laughs> so I go to my prepare screen. I'll be cutting on a mat today because I'm using um, just some regular vinyl and it shows up here on my mat and I'm ready to cut it. I just need to Notice my size of my vinyl. I can cut it in a four by four block, Put just put a piece of four inches by four inches vinyl and that will be perfect. So then I'm ready to continue to send it to my machine. It's gonna find the machine I'm using and you can connect your machine with Bluetooth or you can connect it with a wire. I think mine's actually connected with Bluetooth today. And for this project, I'm going to be using um, Cricut's Permanent Glossy Pearl Metallic Vinyl, which I don't have up here in one of my favorites. So I'm going to browse all materials.
Now, if you're on using a Cricut Explore 2, it has the dial. You can set the dial to custom and then come into the library of, of materials that have already been preset on how much pressure to use, speed, and all that. So I'm going to just do a quick search here for pearl metallic because that's what I'll be using today. If you're using glossy vinyl or removable vinyl, um, I can't talk and type at the same time. Um, you'll want to do a search for whichever type of vinyl you'll, you'll be using. So I, that didn't come up. So let me just type in vinyl and I'm using permanent vinyl. Um, and I'm using matte metallic. We'll select that one. Pearl, it's a pearl metallic, but I don't see a pearl metallic. Textured metallic, pearl right here. So we're using the pearl metallic. Now, if this were a favorite one I used all the time, I would go ahead and select this little star and say, yep, I use this a lot. I want it to pop up in my favorites. So the default pressure is already set. I've got my fine point blade loaded and I'm ready to send it to my machine. And actually my machine is um, blinking, it's ready to cut. So before I exit out of here, um, Lindsay, are there any questions I can answer? We are doing great, keep, keep on going. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen here and we'll go to the overhead. This way I can do this one. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the different types of vinyl that are available. Like I said before, I'll be using this uh, premium glossy vinyl, but if you're using a um, like a it, different vinyls do have different types of transfer tape that you'll want to use with it. So if you're using a vinyl like this permanent glitter vinyl, the premium glitter vinyl, you'll want to use a strong grip transfer tape. The strong, sorry if that's making a lot of noise. The strong grip transfer tape has a purple grid on it and it'll say strong grip on it. So when you're using something like a glitter vinyl, you want to use the strong grip transfer tape. If you're using just regular um, removable vinyl or permanent vinyl that doesn't have like a texture, if it's got a smooth feel to it, you can just use the standard transfer tape to make that. So that's what I have today. I'll be using this, my metallic here. Super excited to see how this looks on this mug. Um, it's a great fun design. So. I'm gonna cut, use my paper trimmer here and cut my metallic, my vinyl down to a four inch by four inch piece. Now, normally I would have cleaned my mug um, using, you know, like a Windex or just soap and water and given that a good clean before putting this down. But as you saw, I took my wrapper off today and I didn't clean my mug ahead of time. So just take, take a note of that and don't be like me on that one. Make sure you clean up your surface. I think it'll be okay, though. I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just gonna slide this up. I trimmed down a piece so it'll be a five by five piece. And we're just gonna put that onto our mat. Now I am using the standard grip mat. The, the grip, whether between the standard grip and the light grip, it basically tells the difference between um, how much adhesive is on the mat and so how much hold it will have on your material. So if you're using vinyl, you can use the standard grip mat or the light grip mat. If you're using paper, you want to use the blue light grip mat so it doesn't like grab onto your paper too hard. Um, there is a fabric mat. So if you're using fabric on your maker or the Explore, you want to use that mat. And then there's a strong grip mat and that's usually used on when you're doing something like um, an acrylic piece or something like that. So here we go. So it's cutting out. Now you'll notice with your machine, you have two, on an Explore or a Maker, you have two different clamps. In clamp A, you can put 
a stylus like this if you're doing scoring, or you would put a pen in clamp A if you were drawing. And then your clamp B, you would have your fine point blade or your deep point blade. I mostly use my fine point blade on everything I'm cutting. Um, and I, so I, that usually stays there, but I mix out on my clamp A. Now I, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'll need to have a little room here. Here we go. Now, another question I get asked a lot is, how do you know when to use permanent vinyl and when to use removable vinyl? And basically the difference is on how, per how permanent you want your application to be. So if you're creating something that you're going to put outside that you wanna leave, um, you, know, you want it to be there forever, I use a permanent vinyl. If it's for something like a party or home decor that I wanna change up seasonally, I'll use a removable so I can just pull it off and not damage anything and it will always be there. Now, this is cut through for me. It's telling me it's ready to unload. If for some reason I can't feel my cuts and I don't think it cut through, I could hit my um, play button again and it would pull it back in and cut along the same lines. But I can see, I can feel that it's cut through. If I were unsure, I could take my um, weeding tool and just give a little, a little test and say, did that really cut through like I, th I think it did? And see if I can weed a piece out right on my mat before unloading it. Mine worked out great. I'm just going to unload that like that, and then we'll remove it from the mat. Now, the easiest way to remove your material from your mat is to turn your mat upside down and roll your mat off of your vinyl or whatever material you're using, whether that's um, paper or vinyl or anything like that. Then I do tend to keep um, a handy wipe handy so I can wipe off my mat in case I've had it out and it's gotten dusty or hairs on it or anything like that. I can just clean it off and I put my cover back on right away so that I don't get it dusty um, when I'm through with it. And I love how it, the mat fits right underneath your machine. So you can always kind of keep your work, your space clear from um, anything getting in your way. Now I use my weeding tool and I poke in the corner here and I pull this out um, and I'll start pull, weeding my material. Now I kind of like to do a rock and roll when I'm working with my material like this. So I sort of rock it off the, off the backing here and I roll it away. So it's kind of, it's coming off curling. And I wanna be careful on these little letters here. I don't know if you guys noticed the R cut a little funny. So I just wanna go slowly there to make sure that the whole piece cut properly. And it looks like it did. So we're good to go. We'll just take this off. Now, if you find that you end up with little pieces all over the place, go ahead and have a lint brush handy. And you can just stick your pieces on the lint brush and they, they'll just stay right there. Um, I tend to put them on my finger until I can't put any more on my finger and then I stick them on my lint brush right there. So you do want to make sure you're weeding out all these little pieces. I like to, um, if I'm doing a lot of weeding, I'll put it up on the window so I can see where my cut lines are and I don't accidentally poke something that I wanted to keep as part of the design. Or if you're working at night, the um, Cricut Bright Pad is awesome for weeding and layering designs. And we do use that in the 102 class when I show you how to layer. We do have some fun classes coming up to some other project-based classes coming up with Michaels that um, you know, if, you like, if you like learning and wanna learn more and more and more with your Cricut, definitely would encourage you to take those classes. They're, they're more demonstration, the ones we have coming up, but they certainly are fun. And then you can always go back and watch it and make with me later. So all these little pieces, you just kind of pull them out with your weeding tool. Um, if you have any troubles with it, a lot of times you, if you don't have a weeding tool, 
you can roll your transfer tape like that, your, your background paper on your vinyl like that and just roll it and pop off your image like that. So once you've gotten everything weeded out and off your fingers, <laughs> we'll take that off of our fingers here. Um, the next step is to use your transfer tape. So I have a roll of transfer tape here and I'll just cut off a piece. My, my vinyl piece here was five by five. So I don't need to have too big a piece. I think I'll just cut a piece that's about four inches by four inches on my transfer tape. Now, if you don't have a paper trimmer, don't worry because the Cricut transfer tape all has a grid on it and each grid cube is half an inch. So you can get nice straight lines just using your, um, your scissors on the, on the transfer tape. The lines are super helpful as you're lining up your design to get it onto your, your mug or whatever in a nice, even way. So what I'm gonna do is a hinge method where I just take, I start by taking um, half an inch on my transfer tape and rolling that back and exposing that bit there to the first grid line. Then I'm going to, I use, um, this is a self-healing mat I'm using and I love it because it's got the grid on it, but you can just put this down on your table or, you know, whatever your work surface is. And you know that right there, you have a nice straight, even line and you just take your final design and push that up against that, that line right there that we've created and pull your transfer tape over onto your vinyl. Now I do like to have a wedge handy because it works as a very nice and steady hand for me. If you don't have a wedge like this or a big one, you can just use a credit card will work. Um, the edge of a book you could actually work. And what all you're doing is you're just trying to lay your transfer tape down as smooth as possible and then work out any bubbles and push that trans that vinyl design onto the transfer tape so that when we go to peel it off, it'll peel off nice and easily. So again, this is where I'll use a little bit of a rock and roll. So I kind of rock it back and forth and I roll it off the vinyl like that. And you wanna make sure every little piece comes off. If it doesn't, like that little eye didn't seem to wanna pop off, you can actually fold your, um, the back of your vinyl tape, your vinyl design and roll it off that way. If a piece of it sticks down, one of my tricks is I'll fold it and roll it like that and then use my weeding tool to, to gently encourage it down. That doesn't, it doesn't stay. Now you want, you can throw away the backing of your vinyl, but you're gonna wanna keep the backing of your transfer tape because you can save your transfer tape. So when you save your transfer tape, you can use it over as many times as you want. Now, I just use these little uh, cloths here to hold my, my mug so it doesn't curl on me or roll across the table. So we're just gonna push that up like that. And then when I'm ready to put my design down, what I like to do is sort of the taco, uh, taco fold where you find the center of your design and then you can put that design down here. Now, uh, the nice thing about working, starting off with a tumbler is that you don't really have to worry about finding the center of the tumbler. It, um, it'll go wherever. Um, but you can use the straight side here at the top of your paper to make sure you're lining it up like that. So then I'll hold up one side or the other side and I'll just kind of push in the center and make sure I've got a nice um, base started and then I'll roll it over and push it down and make sure it makes contact with the glass or the tumbler. And then I'll do the same thing with the other side, slowly working it over to make sure that the vinyl made contact with the tumbler. And then you can run your hand over it, use your wedge, and you wanna just give it a nice little burnish and make sure it's, Going to stick down. You can use a soft cloth if you want to make sure it's going to stay down on your tumbler. And then we just come back and we're going to remove.
the transfer tape from the vinyl design, I'm gonna move it this way so I can do it again, that rock and roll method. So you start with the corner and you start rocking it off and rolling it off of your tumbler. So see how I'm, I'm pulling it back and it's just rolling it off, going, working from corner to corner and rocking that transfer tape off of my vinyl design. And if anything's not sticking down or something decides to pop up, I can just use my finger and gently guide it back down. So there we go. Now we have Believe in Your Dreams on the tumbler, and I have my transfer tape that I can put back on my transfer backing here so that I will have it for another use. And that is how I, that's how you make your tumbler from your design. All right, so I'm sure there were questions as we went along that we could maybe answer if people had additional questions. Feel free if you have a question. I think we have a couple more minutes. We have like five minutes or so that we can answer any questions you had live either about the project or an upcoming project. Yeah, there was a really good question and I think it is much easier to see it than to maybe explain it. But there were some questions about wanting to change from like cut to draw and how would you do that in design space? Oh, perfect. Okay, so let me go. Um, I'm going to share my screen again and we'll go back into design space and we'll show that. That is done in the operations, um, like in the edit panel here. Now, not every um, operation do you want to try on an image. So like an image like this, Believe in Your Dreams, if you changed it to a draw, what it would do is it would draw the outside of the image and you would just get a line drawing here, which is really cute. Like you could do something like this if you wanted to make like a shrinky dink keychain or something um, and you wanted to draw out the, the design that you could then color in and maybe put it on shrinky dink or something like that. You could do it with something like this, um, but it would just do for this image, it would just draw the outline of that image. And you can change the color of the pen you might be using um, here in the operation panel with that pen. Now, if you were doing an image that say, like let's say you wanted to look for images that had the draw option in it. So let's do, um, like let's do the Cricut Cutie. And let's see if I type in Cricut, if the Cutie will pop up for me. Um, so here's the Cricut Cutie. So you can see different, um, different images will do different things. Uh, so like this little guy here, let's go to the image sets, view image sets, and we'll just look at the cuties here. So this cutie here is a draw cutie. So if I wanted to put that on my canvas and draw that cutie out, I could. This one is a cut file. And you can usually, I don't know if it'll... If you can sometimes hover over in the corner here and it'll tell you if it's a draw file or a cut file. It's just an image you need to know. So we have the draw file here and the cut design here. And um, I think that's, that's it. So when I add those to my canvas, you'll see that they will come in and the layers panel will tell you this one here is going to be drawn with a pen and then you can cut it out. This one is three different layers of vinyl that you'll cut out and then draw. So if I wanted to change this one to a draw, I would just go over here and say draw and it would give me the outline of the cut line. Whereas this guy gives me, it'll draw it and then cut it. Also, when you're doing something like that with, um, with your font, like let's say you, you want to type in a word, your own word. So let's say if I type in my name and I want to draw out my name using the pen feature. Sorry, let me just get these guys, hide these guys. Oops, I need you. Don't need you. Okay, so if I have my pen, my 
font here. And if I go to um, a font, I can choose a font. Let's see. I think oh, three birds, life's a party. I love this font because it does everything. So if I want to take this font here, I can cut my image using the using the basic cut file here, but I can also draw this. They have a writing style associated with this font. So from the font, I go to style and select writing. Now, not every font will have a writing type of font with it. Um, some do, some don't. Some are just writing, some are just cut. So the way you tell that is you go into the font and you could do a search for font, um, for font that are writing fonts. You could use the filter and filter it by writing fonts. So if I were to filter it by writing fonts, these are all the different font styles that will offer the writing feature with it. So I could use that font and it would write it in that style. And then you would, you know, change your letter spacing if you wanted those letters to be closer together to make more of a cursive look. So we can get those closer together. Almost there. There we go. So you could just adjust those and make those so that they would um, they would cut out. So I see another question. Rhonda is asking, what would you use if you want to make a sticky stencil? So Rhonda, I guess it just depends on what you're doing. If you're doing, if you want to make a stencil on the back wall and then use paint to paint it in or like a doormat, I would use removable vinyl or I would use the Cricut stencil vinyl, which is a little bit sturdier. So it won't tear as you, as you take it up or down. Um, so definitely that's what I would use. You can, again, depending on what you're doing, you can use freezer paper to create um, a stencil with two. So that's another option, but the vinyl is definitely a good option. All right, Lindsay, you're so fast. I know you're <laughs> answering those questions. <laughs> we also had, I thought this was a really good question. We also had a question about transfer tape. Mm -hmm. Someone asked like, if I'm not using permanent vinyl and I just want to put removable vinyl on my wall, do I need to use transfer tape? You could just go into that in a little more detail. I think that would be helpful to everyone. Sure. So I use transfer tape um, almost on every design I do because it holds everything together. So in our design that we did today, the Believe in Your Dreams, if I were to try and peel this off, the Believe would come off, but then each of my individual letters would, I'd have to peel those off individually and then replace them in the design to where I wanted to transfer it. So using transfer tape keeps everything together and it holds it all, it, it holds its position and everything. Now, if I were doing like, if I were doing like the bats on my design here, those I might, I could just peel those off and, and set those down without using transfer tape because it's one shape that I don't have to worry about having little pieces with it. Um, so if you are using just removable vinyl, you want to use our standard grip transfer tape as a, you don't want to use the strong grip transfer tape. That's the worst thing. Like if you use, have a design like this and you use strong grip transfer tape, what happens is when you go to put it onto your tumbler or your blank and then try and get the transfer tape to come off the vinyl, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So you do want to make sure I see people will say, oh, I can't get my, my transfer tape off of my vinyl. And then I'll say, what kind of vinyl are you using? What kind of transfer tape are you using? And, and it, usually it's, there's a mismatch of transfer tape. So just think um, the strong grip transfer tape you want to use for gritty pattern texture vinyl and your standard grip transfer tape for the smooth vinyls. So you do that. So Keisha, should I answer Keisha's question live? Okay, so Keisha's asking, I have two Cricut accounts. Why? <laughs> um, if I wanted to close one of them, can I transfer my projects from one account to the other? I would probably um, contact Cricut support on how to merge those two accounts, two accounts. But what you can do, let me go ahead and share my screen again. Um, what you can do is from one account, find your other account, 
So to do that, you go into the home screen. And remember, we talked about like the images, the your projects where your projects are saved. And then you scroll down to the community projects. So first you wanna make sure you've shared your projects so anybody can find them. And then you search for your first, um, your first account. So like my account is Kesley Anderson. So when I search for that, um, I get this account pops up. So I go to this account here with my image and all my projects are here. And I could bring this project onto my canvas. I could customize it and then um, save that project on your new account. So on the one account you wanna keep, find yourself as the second account account that you don't want to have your projects on, but you want to bring them to your first account. So find those projects, bring them onto a canvas and save as whatever you wanted to save them as. And that would transfer them onto from one account to the other account. Now, I understand if you have like 300 projects that you've saved on one account to transfer them over, that would be a lot of work. So that's when you might want to contact Cricut Support and see if there's a better way to transfer your accounts over. But if you only have one or two projects, it might you could do it that way. So that would work. Well, Kesley, I think we got all the questions answered. There are no open questions. Yay! Um, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you to everyone that attended. I know Kesley is just such a great instructor. I always, even though I am not new to cricket, I learn something new every single time. So <laughs> thank you so much, Kesley. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and everyone, thank you for spending your time with us. Enjoy.